and welcome to 4000 and Counting. I'm Wattie, this is Mark, and today we are talking about the upcoming Challenge Cup final. We've got, obviously, hockey talking points. We've got the fact that it's going back onto Viva Play on TV. There's a few things to talk about, Mark. Let's start with the hockey. Start with the head-to-heads, mate. So, over the course of the year, they've met five times so far. They've got one more game on the 24th of March after the Challenge Cup final. The Steelers are... 3-1 3-1 victors down in Guildford, 6-2 victory down in Guildford. The Flames have won in Sheffield. I'm out 3-0. And the last game I was actually at down in down in Surrey, the Steelers won 4-2 in what was a very, very good game. So Steelers lead 4-1 in the series, Mark, but where they are in the league, it's not really unexpected, is it? No, they're absolutely on fire and it's going to be hard to look past them, but I think we should also pay some respects to Guildford who are putting up a fight again this season and have shown by getting into the Challenge Cup final for the second time, as previously in 2019, they faced the Belfast Giants. Great game. Unfortunately, they lost, but they got there and yeah, you were at that game as well. If I'm right, mate, it was the best game of hockey I've seen in the UK in a long time. It really was. It was end to end, really low scoring game, physical, fast, great referee, and that made a fucking massive difference. I can't explain how good the referee was. Everything was just let flow, and the game was just going. It was intense. Guildford played very well that day. They could on another day they could have easily won it. And in that cup final environment, I know it's they're going into the Lions Den. They're they're going into. Sheffield Arena, there's going to be seven to one outnumbered, but they just got they got to go there, and they've shown this year they have won their three two in overtime. They they their other games, you know they they lost three zip up there, but Sheffield shut teams out this year. Yeah, <laughs> like they're fucking sick. Them. <laughs> they're so good my, my client Barry mate of mine um, we went to the to the last Guildford game together and he said the most impressive thing about them and I totally agree with him <laughs> doesn't matter how stacked they were everybody worked their fucking nuts off like so and that's what you that's what you need in big games yeah so you had like <clears throat> you, your scorer was working hard your top end offensive demon working hard in the defensive corners and stuff. Just everybody was pulling on the rope. And when it's like that, and you obviously then have talent on top to boot, it's it's going to be an uphill task for Guildford. But what Guildford do possess is some very, very elite players. They have some unbelievable talent. They've got two goalies that they're, they're happy to play. And whether it be Taz or whether it's McAdam, they seem to have pretty good faith in both guys. Nice to see Longer get some minutes the other day in the shootout. So shout out our boy awesome. Longer. Great yeah, to great job. Great, great to see him get the win. That that he stepped in and done a great job. The Flames that they're not being very good recently. They really haven't. I think they're seven and one in the last. Last few weeks here, they need to find something this weekend going into next week. I think yeah, you're... they they took a bit of a a smash in. Um, was it last night? Last uh, night they took a bit no, of a they, lost, they, they did lose last night. It was only one nothing. They were up in Coventry, um, and and in fact, actually, why why run about Fla- 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 Flames lost six one in in Nottingham. I'm thinking Cardiff. Sorry, yeah, they did. You're right, and a good tilt in that game. Nice, nice to see the big boys chucking some knucks. Panthers, they're they're still clawing their way into this here. They're they're doing their best. There is a big gap, but that's the story for another video. We are focusing on on the Flames, and I just wanted to say though, while we did touch on Coventry, uh, rest in peace to Kino. Obviously, coach. Yeah. For as long as you can remember, the outpour of love from the entire community has been amazing. And I know there's a GoFundMe on the go right now to help his family pay for the funeral and any associated costs. I think we shared that link on our social media. So if you if you want to find it, you'll find it right there. Please do give what you can. 
and one other, Paddy Scott. Again, was lucky enough to get to watch Paddy Scott in the Elite League. When I was in Basingstoke, I would have been being our Elite League. It's irrelevant. The guy was a stud. Like He was one of my favourite players when I was a nipper. Absolutely legit. And he's a hero in MK. So rest in peace to both of those guys. Rest in peace. Um, very sad. But we will move on back to the, the Flames and the Steelers. There's there's some interesting hockey to be played because the Steelers they have lost a couple of games recently. They look pretty bulletproof. Their fans are getting a little like fucking miserable on Twitter and shit. <laughs> like crazy, team, absolutely teams are crazy. Like, Imagine <laughs> you're the boys on that team and you lose a couple of games and everyone's going mentally you're like after the year we've had. Obviously, they had just as much. Um, to see and stress and everything on the back of the Adam Johnson incident. They've not skipped a beat the entire season. And then when it comes down to like this, they lose to Manchester 5-3, they lose to Cardiff 4-1. You know, like, that's it. Like, no meltdown. They lost a couple of hockey games. Like, they the fuck l- out. lost five, five regular ta- in regular regulation. Five games in regulation, they've lost one yeah. in overtime. I chill mean, out, that's fine. just just chill. I'm sure the boys know what they're doing. Like, they really do. Yeah. I, I watched them play like a week and a half ago. They really do know what they're doing. Um, both teams do. Guildford as well. And Guildford are going to be upset with their result. Oh, that's what I went on the Elite League site to do. I got, I got sidetracked and started looking over the Steelers' <laughs> um, recent results. But... Let's have a look at where the flames have been the last the last couple of, couple of weeks here because in their in their eyes their results won't be good enough. Let's go down. So you know, lost to Coventry Blaze three two, then the Sheffield Steelers four two, then the Glasgow Clan three two in a shootout, then lost four one to Manchester, then four three to Guildford. Uh, not to Guildford, sorry, to Cardiff. Last weekend, they, they snap it with a, a four-point weekend. They get a victory over Cardiff in Cardiff, which is always a tough place to go. And then they get a victory at home against Nottingham, as you touched upon just there. They did get a bit of a pace in 6-1 in Nottingham last night. So it's really going to depend on what Guildford team turns up, I think. Yeah, and let's just say since um, since Valentine's Day for Sheffield... Sheffield have beaten the Guildford Flames at home 3-0. They've beaten the Nottingham Panthers 6-4 at home. They beat the Guildford Flames away 4-2. They lost to the Cardiff Devils 4-1. Cardiff Devils were on a heater. Um, The Sheffield Steelers again won 4-1 at home against the Coventry Blaze. They lost, as you touched upon, to the Manchester Storm 5-3. And then... The following evening on the Sunday, they were away in Dundee and beat them 5-1. Yeah, so it's the wagon. So just having a look right now, who's leading the way in points totals in the Challenge Cup. 11 games played for some guys, 10 for others, 9 for others. You see where I'm going with this. But uh, Balmas sits, sits the top scorer for the Steelers with... Five goals, 10 assists for 15 points and 11. Then you've got Valorand, he's always there or thereabouts, isn't he? He's had 10 games, six goals, eight assists for 14 points. Patrick Watlin is right right there with him, 14 points also. And then you've got uh, Daniel Simpiani. By the way, he scored two outstanding goals. If you haven't seen the highlights from, from last week, go check that out. Miko Yosara. He's got 10 apples in 11 games. Mac must be loving it because when remember when he signed, the guys were like, he's going to play on the fourth line. And everyone's like, anyone that knew hockey, he was like, the fuck are you talking about, Willis? He's going to know near the fourth line. Oh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what sort of points he gets. What guys are stud, like certified stud. Um, Dowdy, yeah. obviously, top Brit there. He's got nine points in 11 games. And the list goes on. It's good to... DMN wise, you've got... Sourceman, he's got eight points. He he obviously brings the offense from the back, and then Guildford wise, I'm. This is obviously Guildford, just challenge, so challenge cup. You've got, got the challenge cup. Lewis, there. Their challenge cup. Let's have a look right now. Oh, oh, actually, no, I've only got regular season here. Yeah, so where it says regular season, if you click 
on Challenge oh, uh, on the other Elite side, League. Yeah. yeah, I've got it. So top scorer for the Flames, top point scorer is Ryan Tate at the top with 14 points. He has nine plus five. And then we have in second, Crinella. He has 11 points, eight really plus like three. Him. Then we have our Brit. So we have Lewis Hook in third place with nine points. So he has four plus five. I'm trying to see who else we have. So defense-wise, we have O'Connor with three three points. He has one plus two in 11 games. Um, who else have we got? Let's try and list off some others. By the way, that Cronella, yeah, ladies and gents, if you have not seen him, <laughs> I suggest you do because he is so fun to watch. Takes the puck, he attacks. He's big, he's strong, right? He's he's just really fun to watch. Like, I really like watching him play. He can snipe as well. Oh, sorry. Speaking of defensemen, uh, we've got uh, Lalonde, Bradley Lalonde, on eight points in seven games. So he is one plus seven, solid. Do you know what my so... favorite stat about him is, Mark? And this is league stats. He eats 21 minutes, 43 a night on average. Just a fucking minute eat of this guy. He's like, he's just always on the ice. Turn around. He's like, oh, there he is. And then there's a whistle and he'll be on the bench. And he'll be like, nope, here he comes. He's back out again. Like he, he can log some minutes. Interesting looking through these minute stats. Like it, it, it's, it's interesting to see when you start looking at the Brits and you go, you know, like Zach Milton in the 14 games he's played, his average three minutes of ice time. Or... Sam Talbot in the 25 games is averaged eight and a half minutes. Same thing about eight minutes, 49 for Owen Griffiths in 32 games. Well, then you look at like a top experienced Brit, like Ben O'Connor, again, talk about eating minutes, 21.09, Lewis Hook, 20.58. So they've got a lot of guys that can lug the mail there in Guildford. Yeah. And they all do a great job. Do... They all play a, good per a, big, a big role in why Guildford are in a cup final and they're competing in the league. Yeah, I really like Guildford's decor. I was very impressed. Oh, I forgot his name. I can use this. It was one of, it was one of their little guys. Uh, Jordan uh, Klenick is a shorter guy, number 42, D-man. Super impressed with him against the Steelers last time. Best, best game I've seen him play. I've been there like three, four times this season. I thought he was outstanding. He, he played exceptionally well. Not as big as some of the Guildford D they have, but moves really well. Moves the puck very well as well. Which when you're a forward, that's your dream. You know, if you swing back and get in your lane, if you've got a nice puck moving D-man, he's going to hit you with a puck. Just makes your job so much easier. And yeah, I thought he did that very, very well. I think based on that game down in Guildford, it could literally go any way. Sorry, a little bit of technical difficulties there, but let's get onto the coaching. Fox, he had, he's had his critics, but he finds himself in a final. He finds himself top of the league with a, a comfortable margin and, you know, other teams running out of games. And then you have Paul Dixon, British coach, making the final again for the second time on the back of a second place season last year. I think both coaches and both clubs will be pretty happy right now. Both doing great things. Both doing great jobs. Both both playing good hockey from what I've seen. Very yeah. minimal, admittedly, but they they both look decent. And it's one game. Anything It'll be very interesting what happens. Yeah. Anything can happen one game. Do you want to put a prediction out there? Yes, I think we should. Yeah, okay. Oh, Four three Steelers. I think it'd be close, I think, go on. but just just in their own barn. But I mean, that's enough reason for Guildford to shove it up their hoop. Do you know what I'm saying? But going into someone else's backyard, winning the trophy, how fun would that bus journey? You know what I mean? Like the conversations will be happening, boys. Like this will be a fucking time if we win this in their barn. All their fans just come spoil the party. But I think the Sheffield Steelers this year are going to find a way to win. And I think a couple of months back, I said they'll probably win the treble. So I'm going to take the Steelers 4-3. I think 
Guildford are going to score first, but then they are eventually going to play out most of the game at 2-1 loss until, yeah, an empty netter. I'm going to go 3-1 to the Steelers. So we both going to the Sheffield Steelers wins. Sorry to all our Guildford boys that we've interviewed yeah, sorry. over the years. <laughs> sorry, lads. But you can only pick one team. It's nothing personal. Would I be disappointed if Guildford win? Obviously not. I used to play for Guildford, so obviously always going to have a soft It'd spot be great. there. And I really want to see a British coach win trophies in the Elite League. So, oh, chucking my phone around. Yeah, I'd love to see Paul Dixon win a trophy. That'd be amazing. And then again, I'll Dowdy's captain. I would like to see Dowdy lift the trophy. Like, there's, I could, I could sit and argue with myself all day. There's multiple reasons why I would want both teams to win. And for all you people that are talking about fans going to games as neutrals, other than like, well, I don't. I don't go to any games, not as a neutral. I don't support anybody. So, obviously, next year, if I go and watch Bruno, I'm going to cheer for Bruno from there. And some of the other places that I've been where I liked it, you know, like if I'm in Berlin next year again, I'm going to shout for Berlin when I'm there, but I don't support them. I can I'm still fucking glad you said that, not Prague. <laughs> no, no, but you know what I mean? Like, just where you could... It wasn't like that for me in Prague. Like, Berlin, they had me up in the fucking chart, same in Bruno. Like they were teaching me stuff, they were trying to teach me some words, and like it was fun to be a part of. But I wouldn't, I'm not a fan, but like if I'm yeah. there, I'd like them to win, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, like when it comes to watching games in the UK, totally neutral, and I think it's a great thing. We bitch about clubs not making money and doing this and doing that. If 100 Sheffield Steelers fans want to go watch a game in London, fucking crack on. That's an extra 1500 quid in the, in the pot. <laughs> this is what makes UK hockey go round and we need fans to go to games I saw a brilliant one the other day and it was on football away days one of the league teams game got cancelled when the three young fans were on the way they'd arrived, the game got called off so instead of just jumping on the train and went home they found a local non-league team Right? they all bought shirts, they all had hot dogs and programmes, those three lads doing that probably put like 300-400 quid in that little yeah, nice. non-league Club, that's that's fucking big money. Same thing. Like if if all of a sudden you're getting an extra 150, 200 fans a game, that's that's good for the club. Like, yeah. Should this we got sent this, and it's probably not a story. We probably get into more on another video. Some of the fans are bitching because apparently the Steelers fans that were at the game in Nottingham celebrated when Nottingham scored. And they were like, oh, what do you think? What do you boys think of that? But I think we could probably do a whole video on we'll revisit the 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 video that we said is the rivalry back. I think we did that at the start of the year. We did maybe it's, maybe it's time to revisit that. What do you think? Because people are fucking heated about this situation. Like some fans hate it. This it's been causing all sorts of fucking beef on X, Twitter, whatever you're gonna call it. Everyone's getting up at each other and people are saying can you go to games as a neutral yeah it's so much fun as a neutral don't we, yeah. don't, have a horse, we don't have a horse in the race I wouldn't encourage you to watch horse racing without a horse in the race because that's very boring you've got to back a horse <laughs> you got to back a horse if you're going to do that but at a hockey game you can just go you can be objective like when I stood in Guildford the other day the fans are like you might as well put a Steelers shirt on to the ref like what he just did was a fucking penalty. It was a penalty. Like of course he's gonna call that. He's six feet away, and you like it was just all the fans shouting like they're like, oh you're on the payroll. You're on Tony Smith's payroll. It's like take your fucking rose tints off and just watch the game for what the game is. You'll have a much better time. Yeah, you. you'll have a much better 100%. time. One hundred percent. And you know we what else you get from. Uh from seeing it from a neutral perspective. Like when, when you support, if you support one team, you're, you're just watching your players. Most majority of the time, you're just watching your boys. But when you watch it as a neutral, you actually like watch both. You might be interested in just the defensive setup of one team, but you like the way that the other team attack and you, you, you watch the different styles and you just see how they work against each other. And you see more, I don't know, more in a more tactical way. That's an interesting take, yeah. Like, you do. You watch both both teams. I think when I was in Guildford, I was texting you. Like, I was like, 
this guy and this guy look sick for Sheffield. This guy and this guy look shit sick for Guildford. So, or, or like when I was in Prague last week, sent you a couple of like whippersnappers that were playing for the Slavia team, like a 16 and 17 year old. I didn't know about those guys before, but now we see them and we can we can find out about them. Don't have to be supporting anybody. I've seen good guys on the other teams as well. It's fun because I think you appreciate everyone's talent a little bit more. Yeah, and you know you say about nude going as neutrals and stuff. Actually, something I've done this season is after games, I've actually met a few of the opposition players as well as home players. I love having a chat. I don't ask for autographs. I like a photo <laughs> at the end if I remember. Most of the time I'll forget. <laughs> but yeah, I just I just like a chat just to hear their story and just see how things are going. Like I generally just respect and I, I like Bruno. I'd say I support them, but even when I'm stood in the ultra section, like I'm not afraid. Like I see the fans are like, ah, oh. like like there should have been a penalty. I'm just no, no, it fucking shouldn't. Like no, not if it's not a penalty. <laughs> I, 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 I like to I like to see, to be to be fair. I like be to say I see right? things. Yeah, and even if you know, I, I try not to have those rose tints. Like I I accept the Especially situation this, the because way. I see it from the other side. Especially doing this. Yeah, this is this is basically was was done it for me. Yeah, right. Being on the being on the podcast, speaking with players from different clubs. You know, I was a big Phantoms fan when I was younger, and do you know what? I absolutely love and appreciate MK and what they do. I don't support them. I just appreciate the way they've always done things, the yeah. way that their play is, like all their old play, like McPherson. Do you know what? I, I used to really dislike him, but yeah. as I got older and matured as a person. I begin to absolutely appreciate what he did for that team and just the way he played the game. And I absolutely respected, went to his testimonial. And I'm not trying to claim to be a better, better person in terms of hockey knowledge and stuff like that. But I just say, like, expand a bit more sometimes and you, you'll appreciate Watch the more. bigger picture of hockey. Yeah, of course. Like, I've had good times all over the country. Like, I, I went and watched a game in Aberdeen this year. In the SNL, like that was a cool experience. Went down to Oxford, you know, went to the fucking museum, did a couple of touristy bits, and then went and watched Oxford, a very good young slough team play. Now, I've been to interesting games all over the place this year, obviously Europe, but it's nice to, to just go and watch a game. You, you can you can enjoy it, you can enjoy it, you can, and as you say, you were meeting guys when I've been down in Cardiff this year. I was down there for Swindon and Solway and obviously Manchester and the Devils. Straight in the ref's room after, chat to the boys, catch up, shoot the shit. You get to see a couple of the boys that you know on the teams. Like when Cardiff are there, I get to see Josh. It's nice to go down and catch up with people because, you know, once you're an adult, it's quite it's fucking difficult when you've got a job and everything else is going on. So to, to be able to take a step back, go watch games as neutrals, like... Well, I got I met Riley Brandt's parents in Guildford. They were they were awesome. We sat and chatted to them for like 15, 20 minutes, listened to a bit of their story. You know, like thinking roommates with Dave Whistle back in the day. So like it was pretty cool just learning some bits about him. Met Fergie's parents when I was down there. So a hockey community is a very small one. If you can broaden your horizons and go and meet some new people, you you'll have a good time, man. Yeah. 100% there's a lot of really good people out there in the hockey world like I've met so many good people in UK hockey hockey everywhere I've been it's yeah. just the beauty of it some really good people with a lot of knowledge out there and then there's just some absolute fucking mutants but majority of people with our predictions 4-3-3-1 three, three, yeah. are we going to be the ones <laughs> talking shit let us know in the comments below folks because We've got around a week here, just less than a week. It's on next Wednesday. Oh, before we go, before we go, nearly forgot. Talked about it off the top, and then we kind of left it alone. It's behind a paywall again, but it is on TV. I mean, it's something. <laughs> it's it's something. It's only a tenner to join via play, Viva Play, whatever they're called. And that's not bad. It's going to be 15 quid for a stream, most likely. So 10 is not bad. You're going to get a month of other sport with it. I think if if this goes well, maybe we see them go back on, on TV next year and then you're 10, 15 quid a month if there's a game or two a week on there. That's well and, well and truly worth it. What do you think about them putting it behind the paywall? Because we talked about... Absolutely don't agree with it. Absolutely don't agree with it. One yeah. thing I will say is if if they're doing it, 
if the TV channel is doing this to test the water to see maybe they didn't like the performance of when they sponsored it for the online stuff. So maybe they want to see it again after this so-called, you know, like, you know, the average attendance is boosting every week. Yep. You know, you have that weekly thing. Maybe they're trying to see what interest it attracts as to whether they invest next season. Otherwise, I think it's fucking stupid. Sorry for my language, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I just, come on, like the, the, the arena is going to be sold out. Yeah. Just let everyone watch it. Let it become an exciting event for people. Let it have a bit more feeling. Well, Even neutral, neutral, neutrals can now watch it and appreciate a good game of hockey between two good sides. So what I was saying to Barry, like, and I, I said it on the pod last week, the first period of that Guildford Sheffield Steelers game was the best period of UK hockey I've seen since the Guildford Belfast Challenge Cup final. It was fucking electric. The pace was mental. I was like, I said to him the day, I was like, imagine this is the Challenge Cup in a couple of weeks. It's sold out. It's rammed. It's loud, and it's on YouTube for free. I was like, you will literally hook people in. They'd be hooked. The game was so fast, mate. It was, it was insanity how quick these boys were going out there. They're finishing every hit, chirping after every whistle, fucking cross checks, getting in guys' faces, like good opportunities, big saves. That period, of, that period one of hockey over there the other day had everything. And if that was free to air for people to get their, their peepers on, you will literally hook fans up and down the entirety of the UK and grow the game massively. Yeah, couldn't agree more with you. Plus you get, people know better than us about YouTube. Like, we're fucking novices, beginners. <laughs> like, beginners when it comes to it. But there's people that do this for, like, for realsies and that's their job and there's money to be made in the game. Like, straight up money to be made in YouTube. Advertising, revenue, all sorts of sponsor opportunities. There is legit money to be made. And if the Elite League had a weekly game on there going forward for a year just to test the water, see how it went, I think they'd be pleasantly surprised. And if they go into it... With yeah, a... I completely agree with you. Sorry for jumping in. Okay. The, the monetization in YouTube, the Elite League could have a platform on YouTube and everyone in Elite League hockey and hockey in the UK in general are going to watch it. That's going to yeah. gain a lot of attention. And then people from overseas, stuff like that, that's going to build them a little income. Mums and it's dads. A, it's, a, and it's, a, it's an avenue everybody. of making money. Yeah. But everyone is in North America right now that maybe not. To be fair, most most teams will probably give their their players streams, fam, uh, players family streams for free, I would have thought. So they will be able to get it. But they're not going to give all their buddies and fucking every teammate they've ever had and everybody else's stream and they're not going to better ring up you know simsy and be like do you reckon you could ask tony if we could have 47 fucking streams for the boys back home so they can watch the <laughs> it's not going to happen but if that's on youtube again you might then entice use it as fucking scout it like players could like players that are in north america in europe could log on and watch that game for free and go actually that was actually good hockey. Maybe I will send my CV over there next year. <laughs> like you put yourself in the shop window on so many different fronts. I think I think it would be huge for the game. And unless, like you say, if they're testing the waters to to do a program next year back on back on TV, so be it. But I think YouTube's where it's at. Yeah, and I'd even say just yeah, YouTube hundred percent and. Like, it's not the same experience. Like, it's so good to go to a hockey game. You see so much more when you go live. So take the... Uh, honestly, it might seem stupid to the owners and everyone. Like, it generally might because I know you make money from streams. But, like, see how it grows for, like, one month. Test it for one month. Like, free. Three months. Three months. Three months. Just, just do it for free and see the audience that it can track. It can attract. Look at the audience and then look at a pricing that is attractive. Yeah. Because like, the other thing you is... Need, it, you need it, to make money as a business, but make it attractive. Right. Let's say you're sat in Nottingham right now. Game pops on. Never been before. 
Oh, Panthers v Devils. Well, I'll fucking click on that. I'll see what it's all about. The rink's down the road. Never never been. They watch a period of that and then go, fuck, I'm going to the next week's game. So they buy a ticket and then they go to the week after's game. They buy another ticket. They take a mate with them. They have a couple of beers. After three weeks, they're like, I want a fucking jersey. Now they're buying programs or whatever it is, merch. They bring a couple of mates. So that's how that's how the game's going to grow. New people come in, they bring a friend. The friend enjoys it. Like my client Helen went to my brother's um, League Cup final against Slough the other day. She works in Gatwick, so she just shot across the street. She took one of her mates. Mate was like, ice hockey? She's like, yeah, we're going to ice hockey. Let's go. So she picked her up, took her down there. She's like, she's been messaging her every day, every day since. Helen, when are we going back to hockey? When, when can we go back and watch, watch the, the Red Hawks again? Like she's all over it. And that's what we want. And we just got to introduce people to the game. And if it's on free, for free on YouTube, you have a huge, huge global audience right at your fingertips. See, so like you say, see how many of these then go on to order jerseys that live in Slovakia, who wherever. USA, wherever these people, the audience is from, people pick up soft spots through through these kind of things. I agree. You know, if, if you've got the the uh, availability to watch something, you know, everyone likes something for free. So if you're going to put out free hockey, now that I think that the UK has become more global with ice hockey, maybe not within our own country, but like within the hockey world. Yeah. You know, being in that top been in that top group let's i always bang on on it. yeah let's do that let's capitalize on being in that top group stop putting gb games behind a fucking paywall as well please while we're at it yeah, yeah, yeah. let's see yeah <laughs> please please and thank you i'm sure all you fans would agree i know you say uh, some of you, some might say yeah but you gotta make some money well there's other other revenues to do that again when it comes down to eyes on if we can get our national team playing for free it is going to bring more eyes to the do sport. you have to play for do you have to pay for other international sports not to my knowledge like i i'm I, I don't want to put a statement out there and be really false but that would be interesting to find out well you know and that you know it's like the six... biggest indoor indoor sport watched in the uk yeah well i'm just thinking right so six nations that's on terrestrial tv World Cup qualifiers, World Cup games, Euros, that's on terrestrial TV. So that's football. Cricket, you're probably looking at Sky Sports package you'll have to have. Netball, again, I think netball girls are on Sky. Golf, mainly going to be on Sky. Um, UFC, boxing is going to be kind of spread out across the zone and BT and fucking all the North American ones. So but how what, popular are these? These are huge. Yeah, no, I know they're huge, the but what I'm saying is... These are massive in they're, they're in the payable in terms of some of them. But, you know, like an international boxing event, probably behind a paywall. But the mainstream sports, cricket, football, I, uh, rugby, they're easily accessible to to people, to fans. They can just turn their telly on. It's right there. There's no charge. Yeah, I I don't know. It's hard. But I know we're in a different boat altogether. But when we're talking about just like ease of access for public to get viewing, then it's it's got to be easier. It's got to be cheaper. It's got to be attractive. And if you're running ads and competitions throughout your YouTube, there's so many things you can do now. You can have a merch shop. Don't once you get over a certain amount of followers, a certain amount of minutes, which Elite League were doing fucking they were doing two days less. They would do it in a day, they would achieve that. They would be in a position where they could have a shop on their thing. So all the merch, all the jerseys, anything like that, links to the club shop. You can have everything there. So people do. Eventually you could be able to like send tips and all that sort of thing as well. So People will be able to tip. You'll be able to have members-only content on there. So perhaps you have breakdowns of the game and other bits and pieces, interviews with players behind the paywall for the members. And then the members can decide if they think, do you know what, that was a good game of hockey. I would normally pay 15 quid for a stream. Now I'm going to pay a tenner like, just to help help the team out, help the league out. There, there are so many ways they can make money. 
There is streaming in the ice hockey league over here. One second, mate. You carry do, on. I'm going to let the dog out because she's. They, they do. They do charge. Uh, the clubs, some clubs, you can watch Red Bull Salzburg for free. They don't charge for any of their streams. I don't know if you guys in the UK are able to actually watch it. I don't know if there's any blocker, but that's a heads up for you that Red Bull don't charge. But in general, I know a couple of clubs charge for streams, but their games are also uh, on typically on Sundays because the games here on Fridays and Sundays, sometimes on the Fridays, but always on the Sunday, they televise one of the games in the Ice Hockey League. And this is every week of the season. And yeah. even in the playoffs, you'll have it midweek or something like that. But it does like, and that's just standard television here. That's no package. You can just watch that along with most of the other sports. But then you've also got Sky. Sky also had the same thing. Actually, this season, I'm not sure if they do, but Sky previously, um, especially in the eBell, they were televising games too. So there's various platforms. There's a couple of TV channels that publish televised games. Thanks and there's no reason why UK can't do the same thing. I would love to see it. Just people, people just want to make money. And I get it, business money, but it's not Let growing the comment. sport, is it? It's Let growing the bank, but it's not growing the sport. Mate, I'll be interested to know, know what people think of this one. Because I think a lot of people would like to be able to have the option to check in. We saw Australia, they've I talked to Paddy the other day. They've done a, like an early bird package. I think it's $70 for the season. You have access to like 150 games live and on catch up. All the players in the league have been given a pass so they can use it. So they can watch, you know, next week's opponents or watch games back. I think it's like it's a great idea. Why are all these th I mean why we've been around long enough why aren't we like at the front of all these ideas i'm not sure i'm really not sure but this has been sheffield versus guildford slash a little bit of youtube <laughs> and ice hockey talk we will we will wrap this here and we will see you for another episode very very soon we're going to be breaking down the whole seahawks and the mk lightning they have their league cup final two-leg affair coming in the last week of March. So, Mark, this has been fun. Ladies and gents, make sure you subscribe, do all the good stuff, and we'll see you again soon. Peace.